let's go ahead and show you how we're set up and what we have going on outside. I'm pretty excited about this. Come on, Shadow. We're imaging tonight with the Orion Maxitoff Newtonian Telescope, a 1,000 millimeter focal length, an F5.3, uh, yep, 5.3, a good fast light bucket. I did have a comment from one of the viewers that uh, they were impressed with the uh, detail of the images I've been capturing with you know one to two hours of uh, imaging data. And that's the reason why right there. It's a, it's a big light bucket. So I'm guiding and I'm all hooked up with the computer that's running the rig. And then I've set up over here the monitor. I'll turn off my light. Turn off this. What you can see on the screen here is known as the Jellyfish Nebula. And this is one nebula that really does look a lot like its name, a jellyfish. And right up here where it looks extra hot, it is. That is where there is a neutron star, very hot, very dense, heating up all the atoms and the hydrogen and everything around there and causing it to emit light. That neutron star is what is left from what is called a supernova. Now, that is a massive, massive star. And when it ends its life cycle and collapses in on itself, it then explodes in a galactic, enormous explosion that reverberates throughout the galaxy. And the heat created is so intense that it tears the atoms apart and forges the neutrons that form the, the nucleus of atoms together into the heavy elements that we know as gold, uh, uranium, lead, and others. And those heavy elements are created only when there is that kind of heat produced by a supernova. A supernova only occurs in our galaxy a few times in a century. So our Earth has gold and lead and uranium and so forth, but the supply is finite. It cannot be created on our Earth. It can only be created in the intense temperatures of a supernova. So what we're really looking at here is a gold factory. Somebody ought to talk to Elon Musk. If he could get SpaceX to figure out how to get to one of these babies, talk about gold mining. There's only about a dozen of these remnants uh, visible uh, in the galaxy. This is one of the most beautiful ones. We're gonna let the rig do its thing and we're gonna come out and check on it. And then I'm going to uh, process this thing and show you the final image. Right now we're at 40 minutes, 40 minutes. I'll point out here that I am shooting with the Optolong L Ultimate filter. It's a great light pollution filter uh, for Nebula. It's a little restrictive in the amount of uh, bandwidth of light that allows through if you're shooting for galaxies, but for Nebula in uh, light polluted areas, it's, it's fantastic. Okay, you gonna go with me, Shadow? We're gonna go check it out. I'm getting tired, but I should have uh, two hours. Uh, here we go. Two hours on it or more. A couple of things that I didn't mention is that the uh, Jellyfish Nebula is approximately 5,000 light years from Earth. That means that the light left that nebula 5,000 years ago. And it's just now hitting my telescope and the explosion, the supernova event, was, uh, from what I read, uh, approximately 30,000 years ago. There was some variation from different uh, sources that I read from, but we'll go with that. It's uh, kicking out the frames, so the scene conditions really did deteriorate through the night. Let's see if the scene conditions improve enough to capture another 16 minutes of data. If not, we'll shut it down.